following is an excerpt of a recent Mort Radio broadcast. The one thing that can be said about James Livingston, a professor at the Rutger University, New Brunswick, New Jersey, is that he takes dinner very seriously. Now, many people are going to tell you that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but that means nothing to James Livingston. For him, dinner is top tier. That's right. James Livingston the hero of Harlem, the defender of dinner, the Ayatollah of rock and rolla, loves his burger and fries. He hates white people, but he loves his burger and fries. Now, back in May of this year, 2018, after getting through another long and tedious day, Mr. Livingston, uh, better known as James to his friends, decided to partake in a meal at one of his favorite restaurants, the the Harlem Shag, which is located, well, of course, in Harlem. I, I guess he was really hungry because he just couldn't wait to get there and sink his teeth into one of his favorite burgers. But there was a problem when he got to the restaurant. He was unable to get his burger because of children. There were children there. And they prevented him from getting his burger. Now, I don't know what their ages were. I don't know if they were babies or toddlers or, or preschool or elementary school age or high school day, or high school age. I, all I know is that they were children. Well, that they were children, but also that they were white children. White children prevented James from getting his burger. And how do I know that? Because he told me so. He told many people. Now, you and I, if our dinner was interrupted by a bunch of unruly brats, or, well, in this case, unruly white brats, you and I would just be upset about it and then just leave it at that, brush it off, and go on with our lives. But that's because you and I are uneducated rubes. We're just illiterate slobs. We don't know any better. We don't know no better. But you see, James Livingston isn't like you and I. He's not going to take this lying down. He's not going to let a bunch of white kids and the selfish, self-centered parents that bore these, these horrendous brats interrupt his dinner and get away with it. No, he's not going to take this lying down. So what Mr. Livingston did it, when his dinner was interrupted is rush home, get on Facebook, and pitch a hissy fit. On Facebook, he posted, and I quote, Okay, officially, I now hate white people. And I am a white people, for God's sakes. But can we keep them, us, us out of, our, out of my neighborhood? I just went to Harlem Shake on 124 in Lexon for a classic burger to go. That would be my dinner. And the place was overrun with little Caucasian assholes who know their parents will approve of anything they do. Slide around on the floor, you little shithead. Sing loudly, you unlikely moron. Do what you want. Nobody here is going to restrict your, your right to be white. I hereby resign from my, from my race. Fuck these people. Yeah, I know it's about access to my dinner. Fuck you too. <laughs> wow. You see? You see? There, 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 there you go. You now know the answer as to why we have the problems in our society that we do. Are you woke yet? Do you see the light? Have you heard the news? That's James Livingston has laid it all out for you. All our problems are because of those fucking white kids. They're always, I don't know, they're always just laying on the floor. They're always wanting to play their Xbox or PlayStation 
or or Nintendo. They're always wanting a fucking. They're always wanting a glass of water in the middle of the night because they get thirsty. They're wanting. They're always wanting a happy meal after school when all you want to do is get home. And and then they want to always sing. Oh yes, they always want to sing. They're sitting around, just London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. Now, shut up, Rosemary's baby. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> James Livingston has laid it out, and now we know what the problem is. Yeah. James, he's a work of art, believe me. Now, the too long didn't read conclusion to all this is that Facebook very soon after the post was made, took the post down, citing that it was hate speech or uh, offensive, something like that. And uh, James, being the intellect that he is, didn't just let it lie. He made another post citing that, of course, this, this comment he made, this post that he made, was done so satirically that it was humor, that it was his intellectual wit his his statement against uh, gentrification and didn't understand why it was taken down and then proceeded to talk about how he wanted uh, the white kids and the white mother and father of these kids to pick up and go somewhere else and to stay away and, and be ignorant in their white privilege, which you probably already knew that was going to come to as well. Now, why this is coming up months after it happened, is because Rutger University finally decided to take disciplinary action against James Livingston. Now, what this disciplinary action would be, uh, no one knows. It could be just a, a stern talking to, or it could be termination, but no one knows. Obviously, because they did, uh, the university decided to take disciplinary actions. You have two camps. The camp that says this was free speech and therefore there should be no repercussions. And then the camp that says he should be accountable for his actions. Now, in a memo that was released, it's described that the university came to the decision to take disciplinary action based on three factors. One, was this free speech? Was what James Livingston posted on Facebook protected speech. And yes, it was. As even though it's ignorant and stupid and idiotic in what he said, it nonetheless is protected speech. Therefore, there's no argument there. The second factor was did he do this on the university's time, on the time clock? And obviously, he did not. He did not use the school's name. He did not use school property, and he definitely wasn't on school's time. He did this on his own time and used his own personal Facebook account. So, he, you know, he's fine on that, on that factor as well. It's the third factor that bit James in the ass. The third factor is that whether his speech, his, his, his Facebook post in this case, somehow prevented the school from providing services, in this case, offering education to students or offering services to the students. And in their opinion, yes, it did. They cited that there were uh, a number of emails, a number of phone calls uh, concerning James Livingston and his Facebook rant, concern that it was possibly racism or reverse racism, uh, and actually cites three students by name who came up uh, to the university and stated that not only were they uncomfortable being at the university, but would be uncomfortable if they had to take a class with James Livingston or with James Livingston teaching the class. Now, to hear James Livingston explain this, all the complaints about this, all the emails and phone phone call, calls are coming from ultra conservatives or or alt rights or neo nazis or white supremacists you know and that's the only per people who are complaining about this uh which anyone with just basic common sense knows that's not the case yes 
there have been um, those type of people complaining about this, suprem- uh, white supremacists, neo-Nazis, alt-righters, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm pretty sure that there's been a lot of just middle-of-the-road uh, Americans, people like you and me, who have complained about this, who looked at the post in disgust, shook their head, and said, what a fucking idiot, and, and possibly even called the school about this saying, you know, this isn't acceptable. There's a limit. There's a point. I think James Livingston is deluding himself if he thinks that the only people complaining about this are alt-rights or white supremacists or or neo-Nazis or race baiters and so on and so forth. Uh, That's a small fraction. I think the majority of people who have a problem with him and his ignorant views um, are, again, people from the middle of the road on both sides of the spectrum uh, who are black and Hispanic and Asian and white. I think people in general have a problem with what he said. Now, I don't know or I can't predict what the university's decision will be as what type of uh, disciplinary action they'll take, but this is what I think should take place. I don't think they should terminate this guy. I don't think they should lay him off, kick him out of the school. At best, at best, I think, if anything else, they should just warn him saying, see, you pull this shit again and we'll fire you. Maybe even put a you know moral clause in his contract, which you know a moral clause basically states if you act a certain way or do things to embarrass us, or or prevent us from performing our duties, we're going to terminate you. Again, at best, that's what I think they should do. By no means do I think they should terminate him. As as stupid as I believe his comment was, and as ignorant as I think he is, I do not think they should terminate James Livingston. And for the students and and or the, the parents of the students who are supposedly concerned about James Livingston on whether or not he's racist or, or or going to discriminate or cause havoc to white students. I wouldn't I wouldn't be bothered by that. If I was a white student going to Rutgers University, because I am white, I would relish this. I would be happy about this happening, about this particular his, history professor making these statements on on Facebook. That's what's great about protected speech. That's what's great about the First Amendment. It allows us sometimes to see people who, for who they really are. You see, if I was a white student at Rutgers University, I would see this post by James Livingston, and I would avoid taking his class. Or if I couldn't avoid taking his class, I was required to take his class. I would then know to take the class as a pass-fail, do not take a letter grade, to do what was required of me to do and nothing more, do not voice my opinion about anything, and then get the fuck out of the class. Now, I know some people say, well, that's that's not the way to handle this. But, you know, we're talking about reality here. We're talking about real life. Sometimes the best way to handle situations is to get in and get out. Because if there is any kind of reverse racism or discrimination and I'm not saying there is or isn't, but if there is, there, they always preach about racism being about power. Well, in that classroom, the most powerful person is James Livingston. And if it's the kind of, you know, college course, and I've been through them, where a great deal of the grade, if not all the grade, is is based on essays, uh, that's dangerous because since he's a Ph.D., with the subject being history, I'm pretty sure he can tear apart your essay without even thinking twice. I'm pretty sure he could make your life miserable if there was such a thing in that class as discrimination or reverse racism. I'm not saying there is, but even if there was the slightest chance that there could be, I would not give him the opportunity to do that. I would try to be as unnoticeable as possible, do what I need to do and get out. So I wouldn't even worry about whether or not there would be some kind of discrimination or racism 
against whites in that classroom. If there was any racism, and I don't really believe there was, if there, but there, if there was any kind of racism in, in his Facebook post, it was racism against non-whites, against blacks and Asians and Hispanics and whatever other race. Why? Because it, when I read the Facebook post, it's as though he's saying that because you were white, I expect more from you. If you were letting your black kids or Mexican kids or Asian kids run around and lay on the floor and be disruptive to everyone in the restaurant, I would expect that. I don't expect that from whites. That's, that's kind of the take almost that I get from that, from that post when I read it. I mean, it, it, everything's uh, subject to opinion. So maybe you don't take that from that post, but that's what I take. Because if there's any kind of, I don't know, uh, discrimination vibe that comes from that Facebook post, it's more on an intellectual level, like uh, kind of like a warped Nietzsche Uberman attitude. It's, it's like, in my opinion, it seems that uh, James Livingston is the kind of guy that judges people on their intellect. That only a few people, if that, meet his standards of intellect. And if you don't meet the standards of intellect, then you don't you don't deserve the same services and privileges that he thinks he deserves. And why would I get that vibe? Because only two people would react that way, like James Livingston did on Facebook. The two people would be children. And James Livingston himself, a pseudo intellectual. That's the only type of people that would react in this temper tantrum, hissy fit sort of way. So I'm glad that, like I said, we have protected speech because on occasion, things like this happen and you're able to see people for who they are, what they are. The only thing I feel bad about through this whole mess. Regardless of the outcome as far as his disciplinary action, the only thing I feel bad about is for the restaurant. Harlem Shake, who's been serving the community for a few years, a number of years, now has to deal with that every time someone looks them up on the internet, every single time now and for years in the future, every single time someone looks them up on the internet, they're going to see a story and a picture of this dumb fuck's face. No matter how many years from now, they're always going to be associated with this putz, this moron, this pseudo intellectual. And that's what I feel bad about. Because these, the owners of Harlem Shake did nothing to deserve this. Now, I'm pretty sure they're still having a, success, uh, having a successful business. I'm pretty sure that this hasn't damaged their reputation too badly, but it's still a mark. It's still an ugly mole that you can't excise, cut off. Because I can't tell you with 100% certainty on whether or not James Livingston is a racist against his own kind, whether he's racist at all. I don't think he is. But maybe I'm wrong. But I can tell you who isn't racist. And that is the owners of Harlem Shake. The only color they see is green. They keep their doors open and serve everyone, no matter if they are white, black, Hispanic, Asian, Muslim, Catholic, Christian, Jehovah Witness, Latter-day Saint. It doesn't fucking matter to them because the only thing they see is green. And that's a good thing. And what's ironic? James Livingston, this, this pseudo-intellect from Rutgers University, pitched this hissy fit because he couldn't get his burger. Because a bunch of kids, or as he described, a bunch of white kids, privileged white kids, prevented him from getting his burger. And what was the result? The restaurant kicked him out. The restaurant 86 him from their establishment. James Livingston can no longer get his burger at Harlem Shake. 
Now, he may not openly admit this, but I guarantee you that really pisses him off. He couldn't use his excuse of satire, of wit, of humor, of making a statement against gentrification. Because they were all just that, excuses, lame-ass excuses. The people at Harlem Shake knew that his rant was based in just ugliness and anger and nothing more. His hatred for other people, not because of their color, but because of their intellectual level or his the way he saw their intellectual level. So the 86th from the place and they're better off to have done that you know in the end i guess there's some kind of justice in all this they say that in his bio they say that james has been teaching at rutgers for like 30 years or maybe a little more than 30 years and in all that time i'm i'm pretty sure he's done a lot of work But he's never going to be known for any of his writings. He's never going to be known for any speeches that he may have given or for lectures he may have given to students. He's never going to be known for any of the books that he has written. What he is going to be known for is how he pitched a full-on temper tantrum trigger hissy fit Because he couldn't get a hamburger. And that's pretty sad. To me, James Livingston is a real sad individual. Now, maybe he doesn't like what I'm saying. But all I would have to say to him is, hey, lighten up. It's just satire. 